Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 21 of Fall of Kerbin. And yes, winter has come, and we are in late World War II now. And we start at Osiris Fortress, preparing for the incipient Kruolan invasion. We have the odds stacked against us, but we are deploying more ships. We've deployed another light cruiser to shoot down any air attacks that will come, at, come our way, because, well... There are two carriers heading for us, so I thought appropriately we'll have uh, two light cruisers. We've also deployed a battle cruiser, a real battle cruiser. Now that we're in late World War II, the maximum gun size has um, has been increased, and you can see this ship here is a battle cruiser. It has six 12-inch guns, which are pre they'll pack a s pretty serious punch and should complement our heavy cruisers quite nicely. We'll probably be deploying a super battleship next time to do... Uh, fend off the uh, Yamamoto that's coming for us, which isn't going to be great. But for now, we have ourselves, uh, well, the USS Thor, which is a hammer-class battle cruiser. Yes, it's actually kind of smaller than the heavy cruisers, but it does pack more of a punch, and I think it should be rather useful. But anyway, now moving over to Cathenia's Valley, our, our medium base defending the city of Rock... No, the city, the city of Springwood and the path to Cathenia's heart and the loss of the war. We have deployed some tanks. We now have ten tanks here. I have a lot of units. My uh, plan is to go full Russian, just deploy so many units, and the tanks have been totally changed, the system of how we do things. But we have some old tanks here as well. Last time we moved um, a couple of centaurs over uh, from from Osiris Fortress, and here they are, we've got a couple of centaurs, they've been obviously changed to have the new armor system, they still look ugly as hell, but they do kind of have treads, um, and yes, we have three of these here now, which is rather nice, we've got the other one we moved over, these won't be massively effective, their armor's fairly thin and they have low velocity guns, but they should pack a bit of a punch and help us defend our, uh, well, defend our glorious country. But the main thing we have been deploying, uh, deploying this turn are tank destroyers. These are TD2 Cyclopses. They have a 105mm gun, and they're based loosely off the Panzer, the Panzerjager, that's what it's called. Um, and yes, these should be pretty nice. The, uh, there's two variants, one which has no AA gun, and one which has a 20mm AA gun for shooting things that come close to us, because obviously you can't turn a, t um, tank destroyer gun very far, and also for a little bit of uh, air defense, which is good, because this maxes out our points, because you, we now get points to build tanks, so yeah, um, launching four of these, two of them with AA guns and two of them without, will uh, do quite the job. They have medium armor, and yeah, <laughs> things have treads now, which is great. You can see we've upgraded all of our tanks to have treads. This is the G1 Gorgon, we launched two of these last turn, um, 152mm derp gun, they will be rather useful um, for fending off the uh, Kruons. There's just... We're going to have so many units, it's going to be fantastic. We've already got ten tanks here, When I mean, the Kronos, they have quite a lot of tanks, but a lot of them are quite small. They've been launching uh, lighter tanks, which isn't so um, useful. And obviously we have our M3 Minotaur, a survivor from the um, various battles at Osiris Bay. And yeah, it's here, just with its little 20mm gun, probably not massively useful, but it can punch through light armor pretty nicely, and yeah. We've also got our fighters from last turn, the S5F Sparrows, and uh, that one attacker providing some air defense. But I thought um, that since bombers will probably be coming here, it's probably best not to have our air defense right here, because they won't be able to get up to them quick enough to shoot down the bombers, and I'm deploying my rocket interceptor somewhere else. So uh, we'll see the rocket interceptor later, but right now we're over at the forward operating base, which um, I took from the Corollans when they tried to invade with tanks last time, the Battle for Hacksaw Ridge. Beautiful battle we won, and we do have this forward operating base now. So I've deployed five, uh, no, I've deployed four um, S S6F Sparrows, which are slight upgrades from the S5Fs, they've got more powerful engines, they have 20mm guns and a lot of ammo, and yes, these will be, so basically when the bombers come past, they'll have to fly through here first, which will mean that these will take off, and they will chase them, and they don't have to get up to altitude incredibly quickly, because they still have 100 kilometers to travel before the bomber will actually reach the base, so they'll have a real, really hard time getting uh, anywhere near the base with these hunting them down. Um, I think this is probably a decent strategy. We have so many units at Osiris, uh, um, Cathenia's Valley anyway that we didn't really want to deploy more units there for the sake of lag, but I think this is a better strategy anyway. Um, it will be 
harder to get anywhere near Cathedia's Valley, which is the plan. Just keep them away from our massive amounts of tanks. And now jumping south to uh, Rockdale, our city in the south, looking rather beautiful against the snow. Although somehow the snow isn't in the city. It's almost like this is a, the texture pack didn't support that. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, so this is our city in the south and we don't want to be flanked. Uh, there's no forward operating base forward of this city. Um, so we can't do our standard fight, uh, the fighter strategy we're using in the north. So we're just deploying some things here. We've got another S6F Sparrow here, uh, which... We'll, well, that's why we only have four in the north. And yes, this will be just generally defending the airspace. But obviously this won't be able to reach the bomber quick enough to stop it dropping its bombs. So we have a little thing for that. This is the F-15X Draco. It is a rocket interceptor. Yes, it uh, sort of was loosely based on the ME-163, but obviously looks nothing like it because uh, it's hard to get those curves into this. Um, but yes, this is a rocket interceptor. It could intercept bombers at about 8 kilometers in under 30 seconds, and it is packing 20 millimeter guns to quickly dispatch them. And I think it should be rather effective at this job. It's also very maneuverable, at, uh, even at uh, supersonic speeds, so that should be useful. We've also deployed ourselves a G-Bag 88. G-Bag, of course, ground-based AA gun. Um, and this is an 88mm AA gun, and it can shoot things at 10 kilometers away. It fires cannon shells. So this will also be providing us long-range cover, hopefully stopping the bomber from ever dropping bombs. But this is the end of the episode. We have a ceasefire this episode because of, well, it would be unfair for um, Penguin to be able to attack me when I didn't have upgraded units. Um, so we had a little ceasefire, so there's no action in this episode, but this is our deployment. We have 12 tanks now, and a lot of them are very good, well, very good tanks. I mean, we've got heavy tanks, we've got a bunch of tank destroyers, and I think we should be able to fend off the Crowlands even at Osiris Fortress, where you can see our, our forces are really mounting now. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this, and I hope you will come back for future episodes where the violence is probably going to get pretty real. <laughs> anyway, um, but if you want to go check out a couple more videos now, there is my most recent episode of City Skylines Mass Transit. There's also my most recent episode of Road to Colonization, in which we do a little bit of mining on Duna. There's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.